We are Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 5.30. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Travis Chen. The FBI investigating the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Here's ABC's Jay O'Brien in Milwaukee with more on the investigation. It's our top story at 5.30. Former President Donald Trump seen leaving his home in Bedminster, New Jersey, Sunday afternoon, ahead of traveling to Milwaukee for the Republican National Convention. This just a day after what the FBI says was an attempted assassination at a rally in Pennsylvania. Take a look at what happened. Gunfire erupted just minutes into his speech. The former president grabbing his right ear, ducking behind the podium. Secret Service agents then rushing to shield him then lifting him to his feet and escorting him to a vehicle as he pumped his fist in the air. Trump revealing he was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my ear. Today, Trump posting on social media, calling for Americans to stand united. Two people were critically injured and one person in the crowd was killed. Identified as Corey Coppertor, his family posting tributes to him online. The governor of Pennsylvania speaking about him today. Corey was a girl dad. Corey was a firefighter. Corey dove on his family to protect them last night. The Secret Service saying they neutralized the suspected gunman, who the FBI has now identified as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks. Investigators confirming to ABC News they believe this screenshot, now part of their ongoing investigation, shows the suspect receiving his high school diploma. The AR-15 style rifle recovered at the scene was legally purchased by the suspect's father, according to multiple law enforcement sources. This image shows the roof where investigators say the shots were fired in proximity to the former president. Preliminary investigations say this area was looked at as part of security sweeps, law enforcement sources tell ABC News. Later, there were reports of suspicious activity. Authorities believe the suspect somehow got onto the roof and was able to fire his weapon before Secret Service snipers located him. Hours after the shooting, President Biden speaking briefly with former President Trump. The president briefed on the investigation Sunday before addressing the nation. There is no place in America for this kind of violence or any violence for that matter. An assassination attempt is contrary to everything we stand for as a, as a nation, everything. With the Republican National Convention set to kick off here in Milwaukee on Monday, President Biden says he's directed the Secret Service to review all security protocols here. But the Secret Service says there are currently no credible threats. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Milwaukee. And that suspect in the shooting of Donald Trump has been identified. Meanwhile, authorities have identified the su spectator who was killed when gunfire erupted. Here's ABC's Alex Prussia from Butler, Pennsylvania on what we're learning today. On Sunday, investigators closing in on a neighborhood south of Pittsburgh as they dive deeper into the man authorities say opened fire at a rally of former President Trump in Pennsylvania. We had what we're calling an assassination attempt against our former president, Donald Trump. The FBI using DNA and biometrics to identify the suspect as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Seen in this screenshot, investigators confirming to ABC News they believe it shows the suspect receiving his diploma. The image now part of their probe. Several former classmates describe him as quiet and very smart. Two former members of the school's rifle club say he was interested in joining but was rejected because he was, quote, a bad shot. An administrator at Bethel Park Skilled Nursing and Rehab Center confirming to ABC News that Crooks worked there as a dietary aide and that they had no concerns about him. The day of the attack, authorities say the suspect was neutralized by a Secret Service counter sniper. Law enforcement sources tell ABC News the early evidence points to the shooter being a lone wolf gunman. And they're searching to see if the shooter had any social media presence, and if so, whether there were any indications of violence or extremism. We're told he's a registered Republican, and as of yet, there's no signs of an extensive criminal background. Investigators searching the suspect's home and car, saying they found what appears to be explosives in his car. The shooter allegedly used an AR-15 style rifle, which according to multiple law enforcement sources, was purchased legally by his father. And as the FBI investigates the attempted assassination plot, Pennsylvania State Police are investigating the murder of an innocent spectator at the rally. Husband and father of two, 50-year-old Corey Comparator, his family posting tributes online after his death. Today, he's being called a hero. He was protecting his family from the bullets that were being fired. He lost his life. God love him. Two other people were injured, both now in stable condition. 
need to take down the temperature and rise above the hateful rhetoric that exists and search for a better, brighter future for this nation. Alex Perche, ABC News, Butler, Pennsylvania. All right, in other news. <laughs> All right, the third annual Red Sky Nation Missing and Murdered Indigenous Relatives powwow took place over at Riverside Park this weekend. This event was free to the public. Some of the goals of this powwow is to offer education, resources, and raise the awareness of the MMIR crisis. We're trying to create a safe space, a place of uh, healing, a place of uh, somewhere where our, our families that have been affected can come and, and share a story. So we're just, we're just trying to create that space for them and, and the community to come and, and witness that and maybe commemorate their loved one. Over 10 different tribes gathered during the weekend event. And from Model A's Roadsters to Camaros, you could find a little bit of everything at the 51st Bill Diamond Antique and Classic Car Show. The event was free to the public from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Sergeant Floyd River Museum and Welcome Center on the riverfront. We spoke with an event organizer about having classic cars from all eras in one location. You know, it's a special thing. It, it shows off, you know, if, if, if people didn't take this upon themselves to restore these old vehicles, it, it would be a rare sight to, to see them anywhere. You would have to go to a museum or something, and even then it'd be fairly rare. And so the fact that private individuals do this, it, it's really a benefit to the, those of us that are interested in the, in the past. Now, the car show was started in 1970 at the Sioux City Public Museum as part of a temporary exhibition. The event proved to be popular and eventually moved down to its current location on the riverfront. Well, checking back in with meteorologist Maggie Warren. It was hot today, Maggie. What do we got coming up? Yeah, well, that heat is going to lead to some shower and storm chances the next couple of days starting tonight into early Monday morning, seeing a marginal risk of severe weather through the Sioux City Metro and really to the north and east. East there, Yankton also within that Esterville and Storm Lake. And then that threat pivots tomorrow and we see a slightly higher threat for tomorrow afternoon into the evening with a cold front sweeping through. Looking at the potential of large hail and damaging winds with both of these threats, but that highest threat going to be along and east of the I-29 corridor. And I'll be timing out those storms more and have more details in my full forecast coming up. Travis. All right. Thanks, Maggie. Well, the Siouxland Recovery Fund continues to collect donations to help those affected by the flooding. All the money raised, including a contribution from KCAU and our parent company, Nextstar Media, will stay right here in the area. If you want to contribute to the fund, we have links posted on our website. Now that's SiouxlandProud.com and on the KCAU 9 News app.